Yeah, I mean, you could say, thank the Lord, six years on, Keir Starmer has finally accepted the result of the Brexit referendum. That, that would be to be positive. Um, you could, however, deduce that he's doing this purely for cynical reasons, because anyone who's campaigned in national elections, as I have twice, knocked on doors all over the East Midlands and West Midlands of the North, will tell you Keir Starmer's got a massive Brexit problem. People don't believe him, and that's for good reason. 48 times Keir Starmer voted against Brexit. Uh, at every turn, he led the People's Vote campaign to overturn the referendum. More positions on Brexit than the Karma Sutra. In, out, in, out, <laughs> shake it all about. Now, here's a guy we simply cannot trust. Suddenly, he's saying, trust me on Brexit, to try and win over the Red Wall voters. Right. Now, I don't trust him as far as I can throw him. The voters don't, and his own party don't. Sadiq Khan, straight away, the Mayor of London, on manoeuvres, saying, well, hang on a minute, um, Londoners didn't vote for Brexit. Actually, 40% of Londoners did. 1.5 million people voted to leave in the capital versus 1.3 million for Khan as mayor. So Brexit's more popular than Khan. This is a, a U-turn that Jeremy Clarkson will be proud of. I don't think the voters are going to buy it. All right. I really don't. Emma Burnell joins us uh, today for the first time. Ed, Emma is a political consultant. What does your political radar say about this, Emma? I mean, the truth is, Keir Starmer's been saying this for quite a long time, what he's done is put some meat on the bones as to what it means in terms of policy. Um, so he's saying, you know, we ex have accepted the Brexit referendum since we actually left the EU. Um, there is no going back in, there's no turning back. But, but what does that mean? I, I would say it, it, it's, a, it's a been a journey. Um, from grudging acceptance to, OK, well, how the hell do we make this work? Mm. Um, the truth is, whatever we have right now is not working. You can see that uh, very, very simply in the Northern Ireland agreement issues. Um, you can see it any time you go to Cam driving to Kent later in the week. Uh, and I'm terrified as to how long it's going to take me to get down the M20, even if I'm not in an Arctic lorry. Mm -hmm. um, so there are... Brexit is a long-term process, and getting it right, if you are serious about running the country, then you have to give answers as to how you get as close to right as we can. I was an arch remainer. I, I make no bones about that. I wish we hadn't left, but we have. So the truth is, Keir Starmer has to deal with the country we have now, and that's what where we're at. And you would follow him on that or someone like him who... Would... I, I just don't think there's any appetite in the country for reopening the debate okay. as to whether we well, should go back in. Interesting you say there's no appetite. I mean, clearly, Sadiq Khan thinks there is. Yeah. And as um, Martin was alluding to, he's on manoeuvres because lots of people are eyeing up the prize of perhaps yeah. being the leader because it looks as though there might be movement on the Durham Police inquiry as soon mm. as this week. Um, Stella Creasy's also come out saying she'd be in favour of rejoining the customs union and the single market. Uh, there are people saying things like that. Stella may be trying to become leader of the Labour Party, but she's not currently, as I understand it, a Shadow Cabinet member. No. So it would be quite a leap. Um, Sadiq Khan isn't even an MP. What Sadiq Khan is doing is speaking for the majority voice in London, which is pro-Remain. Uh, pro um, yeah. And there's plenty... That, that's a reasonable... It's perfectly reasonable for the elected representative of Londoners to speak with the views of Londoners. Um, that... That's not going to become Labour Party national policy. It might well become a difference between the Labour government of London and a future Labour government of the UK. And you know what? That's the joy of devolution.